Welcome back to another FLIP lecture. Today we're going to talk about what happens after the Declaration of Independence. So where we left off is that Congress is going to vote and resolve to declare independence from Great Britain on July 4th of 1776. Copies of this are spread all over the colonies. We will now start calling them the United States of America. They were read in the streets. George Washington had it read to all of the Continental Army, and the whole idea was to try to inspire these new Americans and give them a reason to fight the war. So at the end of the war, we're going to kind of look at this idea again. America is going to look back to this document for guidance in deciding what kind of nation the United States is going to be. But again, all this declaring independence, all these ideals are nothing if the United States cannot win this war against Great Britain. And so after kind of the early events of the war, those early colonial victory, the British Empire decides to strike back. And they're going to send a large invasion force to the United States of America. And it's at this point the war is going to enter a new phase. No longer is it going to be small amounts of British soldiers kind of having small battles with militiamen. Now it's going to be a real war. Continental Army is going to try to train and fight like professional soldiers. And the British troop numbers and naval power is going to increase significantly right after kind of the Declaration of Independence is signed. And the first major battle of the war can really be considered the Battle of New York. And the British, in order to try to take back the colonies, sent a large invasion force to take New York. Strategically, New York is a very important place. It is on the water, and if you can control New York, then you control New York Harbor, and it's a very strategic place on the map. Kind of able to see this on the map where we can see New York, kind of you can look at Long Island, and how much of the coast you're actually able to control by controlling the city. And so the British sent over 130 warships and over 32,000 professional soldiers to attack the 10,000 soldiers that George Washington had to oppose them in New York. Now, this seems like a very hard battle to win, and in reality, it's going to be very hard for the colonists to try to defend New York City. But the Congress asked the Continental Army and George Washington to nonetheless attempt to defend the city. The fear was that if they, didn't, if they let New York City get captured without a fight, that they would risk losing morale, both amongst the soldiers and the colonials, sorry, the new United States of America, for this fight. The result of the battle was predictable. The Continental Army, Army was crushed by the British and chased out of the city. But luckily, before the Continental Army could be surrounded and destroyed, George Washington and his soldiers managed to retreat and escape New York and basically then go on the run. However, Washington's Continental Army was again caught at a place called White Plains, New York, and they again suffered a devastating defeat. So to kind of give us a look at the map here, you can see that kind of from New York City, they're going to retreat north to White Plains, where they're again going to be defeated. And so it's at this point that they then start retreating south into the state of New Jersey. So the war in the north, in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, was going very poorly. And George Washington's army was in full retreat by the winter of 76. So, just a couple of months after the United States had declared independence, the likelihood of them winning the war is, was very slim. They've been devastated by battles, and the only thing that saved them was that they managed to cross the Delaware River with most of the boats available on that river to put that natural barrier between them and the British. And so, basically, by the end of 1776, things were looking very bad for the new United States to win this war. And so at this point, we enter the second phase of the war, the crisis and the triumph. In the American crisis, in the fall and winter of 1776, was very real. The army was close to collapse, just barely after the war had started. They were low on supplies, food, weapons. They had low morale. Illnesses were sweeping through the Continental Army, resulting in the deaths of a lot of soldiers. And so all the optimism from the Declaration of Independence had largely been destroyed just six months after the independence had been declared. And so again, just like that there was something needed to get the Continentals around to the idea of independence, Likewise, something is going to be needed to shore up the colonial will to fight and win victory for the new United States. 
And this is actually going to come in the form of another pamphlet by Thomas Paine. And he's going to call this one The American Crisis. And in this pamphlet, he challenges the Americans to stick by the cause of independence, even when things were going poorly. He said, these are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. And so he's trying to inspire the Americans, kind of with his pamphlet, to stick through the hard times to win the victory. Saying that, anything worth doing is going to be difficult, and that we cannot quit at the first sign of trouble. And this American crisis is going to be read to Washington's troops. And it's going to be read all over the colonies in order to boost American morale. It reinforced the reasons for the conflict and basically tried to convince Americans that it was going to be worth it. But just like common sense had a powerful change in people's minds, so did the American crisis during the winter of 1776. So in the winter of 76, like we said, George Washington's soldiers are in a bad place. They've lost... They've lost several battles and victory seems very very far away but in the winter of 76 George Washington came up with a bold plan to preserve his army through the winter his plan was that the Continental Army would recross the Delaware River the only thing separating them from the British under the cover of night to try to make a surprise attack to defeat a force of German mercenaries known as Hessians to try to take their supplies and win a moral victory before the end before the end of the year. And so, on Christmas Day of 1776, the Continental Army, under the cover of night, crossed the Delaware River and attacked the Hessians in a surprise attack on Christmas Day. It was a wild success. In one of the smaller but more important battles of this war, the Continental Army is going to defeat this force. This small victory, this surprise attack, boosted American morale after those devastating losses. It gave the Continental Army their supplies that they needed, enough food, blankets, ammunition to last through the winter. And the Continental Army also pulled together another kind of surprise victory at Princeton, New Jersey, before they prepared for winter. So at this point, even though the Continental Army had been devastated in major battles, they had just enough to keep hanging on and carry the war into 1777. This is one of the most famous pictures of, from the Revolutionary War. It's a picture of George Washington crossing the Delaware. This picture is incredibly inaccurate. There's almost nothing about it that reflects what actually happened. We can talk about that in class. But just kind of another example of kind of how we depict stories is usually not the same as the reality that happened. And so while all this is going on in Europe, the Continental Congress, the new government of the United States, had sent diplomats to France to try to get them to enter the war against Great Britain. They sent Ben Franklin because Ben Franklin was pretty much the most well-known American in Europe because of his many inventions and writings. But at this point in 1776, at the end of the year, France was not yet convinced that the Continental Army could actually win the war. And so, they were unable to come directly into the war. So something's going to have to happen to convince France the Continental Army can actually win this thing. And also, in Europe, the war is starting to become unpopular in Britain the longer that it lasts. The lives being lost in a lot of these small battles are starting to add up. And the money it costs to finance that invasion fleet, as well as to keep the war going, it's going to start to add up. And so, the longer this war drags out, the more unpopular it's going to become in Great Britain. And so at this point in the war, the Continental Army has realized that the forces they were fighting before the, inv before the major invasion were very small. The war has gotten real now. It's going to be long, and it's going to be a hard conflict. But there is still hope for the Continental Army going into the year 1777. Hope both for the Continental Army to survive, but also hope in Europe that the United, new United States can get allies and that they can exploit the feelings of the British people to potentially win this freedom that they had declared.